Previously on Waiting for Pokemon Switch. I just really want to make Pokemon videos, you know? <laughs> oh yeah? Taylor made for the Switch, huh? making a video like this like oh it could be oh there's another rumor because I'm sure there's if it doesn't get announced there's definitely going to be a rumor every month this year no doubt every month this year no doubt All of these Pokemon rumors really started to pick up way back in January, when we were all just hoping to see Pokemon revealed and that first big Direct of the year. I even made a couple of videos around this time covering the rumors then, but ultimately I decided not to regularly cover the Pokemon rumor mill, because literally every week of this year we got a new leak about Pokemon Switch, and 99% of these are completely fake, so making videos about these every week would have just been a complete waste of my time and my viewers, which I'm not a fan of doing. This week though, Sarah B, the original Pokemon fan site, the credible source that I have personally been going to for over 10 years for my info, thought one leak was a little more believable than the others. I was still a little skeptical about it, but after doing some research this week and putting together all the little hints and rumors, I'm starting to believe that Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee are really going to be the first Pokemon games for Switch. Just in case you've been living under a rock for the past week, I'm just going to run through the timeline. This all began when Nintendo leaker sweetheart Emily Rogers made a blog post about upcoming Pokemon and Star Fox games. In the Pokemon section of the post, she talks about how Game Freak and Nintendo could learn from Pokemon Go's success, and also how Nintendo actually created the existing Pokemon Go Plus accessory and could create more Go accessories in the future, maybe even ones that correspond with the Switch. She also mentioned that the games would be revealed by the end of this month, and that the names or branding of the two versions might throw some people off. Following the release of this post, the internet quickly unearthed a 4chan post from April 1st. I know there's two big red flags from the get-go, the source and the date was April Fools, but the information does line up with what Emily Rogers said, so we're giving it a little bit of slack here. So this 4chan post comes from a user called Real Leaks. So yeah, just right off the bat, we're getting some really good vibes there. In all seriousness though, this guy claims that there's going to be Pokemon Go integration, that catching Pokemon will work like it does in Go, there's going to be rewards for linking the two games together, and also that there will be a new accessory that works with both of those games as well. Now these bullet points are really the only thing that link this pie in the sky 4chan post back to Emily Rogers post but they've also become one of the biggest controversies to come from the possibility of these new games. I won't get too far into my thoughts, but personally, I think this could be pretty cool. A lot of people are concerned that the whole CP system, or the whole battle system from Pokemon Go will carry over to the main series, but I really don't think that's likely at all. This is going to be a $60 AAA title, and while exploration and collecting is a huge part of what makes those main series games great, the battle system itself is at least a third of how you spend your time playing those main series Pokemon games, as opposed to the maybe one or two gym battles that you would play in Pokemon Go per day, so they're not just going to give you two moves and make you tap your enemy to death every time you encounter a wild Pokemon. Like I said, I think the Pokemon Go integration could be pretty cool, but I also think it'll be pretty trivial. Most likely just some cosmetic reward for your trainer or your Pokemon in either game. The new accessory could also be pretty cool, and I also don't think it will be an integral part of either game's gameplay either, similar to just something like an amiibo reward in a standard Switch game. 
Pokemon Go has been downloaded on over 750 million phones and was arguably the largest mobile gaming phenomena to this date. The game obviously doesn't retain these numbers year round due to the sort of shallow gameplay, but they have continued to improve that over the last couple of years, and in my opinion, it's now just as fun as Ingress, which was the first augmented reality game developed by Niantic. I went to three different parts of the state that I live in yesterday for Pokemon Go Community Day, and I met hundreds of other players who are still dedicated to this game, from people my age to families with young kids. I even saw multiple people that looked over 60 walking around by themselves just catching Charmanders. It would honestly be sort of stupid for Nintendo and Game Freak not to take advantage of that audience, and a lot of traditional Pokemon fans still love Pokemon Go, so I'm not mad at this integration at all, because like I said, it's not going to be an integral part of either game's gameplay. Past that Pokemon Go relationship, there's really no other bullet points in this 4chan post that lead directly back to Emily Rogers' post, maybe besides the fact that it says it's going to be announced soon. But there's still quite a bit of information here that's included with that Go stuff, so the internet is taking it as semi-credible, so I'm going to report on it. The post also mentions that following Pokemon will return in this game, and that HMs will still be replaced by Pokeride, which was introduced in Sun and Moon. This news was a lot less polarizing. Following Pokemon have been requested for pretty much every main series title since the Gen 2 remakes, and HMs forced you to take up a quarter of one of your Pokemon's available moves in order to just fly or surf around, even if the move itself wasn't actually viable in battle, so we're all happy to see those things are coming back. I'd just like to point out that his inclusion of pointing out that HMs don't exist could mean that the existing TM system is still there, which would also mean that the battle system is still roughly the same. Like I said, I've seen a lot of people concerned that combat will be oversimplified in the past week, but judging from this and just the nature of how many more battles you actually participate in in the main series Pokemon games, we just gotta accept that it's not gonna be anything like Go, with the exception of maybe how we see the Pokemon in the overworld and flicking a ball when we actually wanna catch them. Now to the juicy part. This post actually starts off by saying that these are yellow remakes, that there will be two different versions based around Pikachu and Eevee, and that Red and Blue, the main protagonist from the Gen 1 games, will play a part in this new game, but will actually be playing as completely new characters. This means that we're probably going back to Kanto, albeit in the future, which could be pretty cool, and hopefully Red and Blue will play a bigger part in this story than just being the final bosses in the battle tree like what we got in Sun and Moon. Perhaps the most intriguing part of this leak, though, is that the games are centered around Pikachu and Eevee, which would one, make these the first main series games to not feature legendary Pokemon on the box since the originals, and two, mean that instead of picking from a fire, grass, or water starter Pokemon, you'd start with either Pikachu or Eevee, depending on your version. While it sounds a little weird at first, Pikachu and Eevee were red and blue starter Pokemon in the original yellow version, as well as the manga, and they were also Ash and Gary starters from the Pokemon anime, so it makes sense that they would take the forefront here. Eevee is definitely one of the most popular Pokemon out there, but it is in no way as iconic as Pikachu is, at least currently. For this reason, if that new Pokemon game is titled Let's Go Eevee, it would make sense for the company to start building the brand of Eevee as much as they can without revealing that title, which is actually exactly what they've been doing for at least the past six months. Eevee will take the forefront in the newest Pokemon movie alongside Pikachu this July, which they actually released a full trailer for about a month or two ago. And currently, the only new merchandise plans the company has for 2018 and beyond solely revolve around Pikachu and Eevee, which is sure to help spread that brand around. The Pokemon company went one step further for building this brand though, when they created a Twitter account called Project Eevee back in November. Please excuse the following wacky translations because this account is solely in Japanese. 
The Project Eevee account is a limited time project that supports Eevee through random activities with you. And the person in charge of the Pokemon company delivers information here daily. So basically, the CEO of Pokemon Company just decided one day that Eevee doesn't get enough attention, so he's going to put together a team of people and pay them to promote it so that Eevee becomes more popular among Pokemon fans. And he's also going to have a hand in it every single day. It sounds to me like either the CEO is just a really big Eevee fan, or he's trying to build the brand of Eevee for that new Pokemon Switch game. I mentioned earlier that the Project Eevee Twitter account was created back in November of 2017. The original purpose of the account was actually just to promote a new holiday that the Pokemon Company had just announced, being the official Eevee Day. The first Eevee Day was 11-21-2017, or November 21st, and saw the release of exclusive Eevee merch at Pokemon Center stores. Back in November, no one really thought about this day too much, but now that Eevee is rumored to be at the forefront of the Pokemon Switch games, it's starting to make a lot more sense why they did this. Since the beginning of the Twitter account, it has featured multiple videos of Pikachu and Eevee together, and looking back at some of these possible teasers, it's almost like a cheeky slap in the face, like how did we not pick up on this sooner? This is also a pretty good time to bring up a picture that Game Freak lead developer Junichi Masuda tweeted out just a few days before the Emily Rogers post featuring a Pokeball next to a Pikachu dressed like Luigi, with a smaller Pikachu and an Eevee directly under him. I know that wasn't the best description, but I'm showing you the picture. And Luigi's catchphrase is, let's go! So this is basically the Pixar version of the phrase, Pokemon, let's go! Pikachu and Eevee, which in no way confirms it, but that's just too much fun not to throw in this video. If we go back to the Project Eevee Twitter account though, you'll notice that a frequent theme on this account is to tweet out every day at 11.21. They'll start the post with something like, oh it's 11.21, it's Eevee's bedtime, then with some adorable picture and some weird quote that I don't fully understand because of the bad translation. They've been doing this off and on for a long time, but in the last month, they've made sure to do this twice a day every day at 1121. Now, I'm not saying that 1121 will for sure be the release date of Pokemon Switch, but if Emily Rogers and Real Leaks are both right, and this account has been secretly teasing us for the last six months, it would make total sense that they've also been teasing this date from the get-go. This is a limited time project, meaning that they're only going to care about Eevee for the time being, probably just until the brand has been built enough for Eevee to take the stage as a main series Pokemon game mascot, and that Eevee Day was not only a promotional event to raise awareness, but also a secret tease to when Pokemon Switch would be released. After all, what better day to release an Eevee themed game than on Eevee Day itself? Now obviously, this is not confirmed whatsoever, and I want you to take this with a grain of salt, but just the whole Twitter account patterns that I found, the Eevee Day thing, and just the fact that November 21st seems like a pretty good holiday release date for a Pokemon game, there's just too many signs pointing to this date for me to not say anything about it, so there you go. Either way, I'm super excited to go back to Kanto. I don't think it's going to be a remake in the sense that Fire Red and Leaf Green were, so I don't think it's just going to be the same routes with updated graphics. I think they'll take the general themes of the routes and caves that were in those games and kind of build it around that, but I have a feeling these are going to look completely new from anything that we've seen before. Um, E3 is just around the corner, so we're bound to learn something by then. Emily Rogers says by the end of May, so... It's coming soon, guys. Get excited. I'm super excited. Let's go. See what I did there? Let me know your thoughts on Pokemon Let's Go Eevee or Pikachu down in the comments. Leave a like on the video if you enjoyed, and subscribe to my channel for the latest Switch content available. This has been Max from Max Culture. Thanks for watching.